Welcome back, viewers. And um, we left at the question which was asked to Tim. Yes. Um, if I have a company which has a bank balance of X amount, what is the best way to get that money out of the company? Well, if you've got a lot of retained profits in a company um, and, you're, and you're no longer going to trade, let's just say, for example, as um, an insurance company, uh, so you've got retained profits in that company, you can either take it out as an individual okay. uh, and pay personal tax on it and personal <coughs> dividend tax on it, or you can take it out uh, under a, a solvent liquidation okay. uh, and then you'll pay 10% entrepreneur's relief tax on that, which is a lot better than paying uh, dividend tax and also personal tax okay. on taking that money out as an individual. Okay, so um, and what are the obligations with a limited company? What, what are the what are the obligations with a limited uh, company? Well, the obligations uh, file you annual accounts. Yeah, the file annual accounts, uh, yeah. file the tax returns, mm -hmm. and as a director of a company, obviously you have a legal duty over the uh, company. Yeah. So you are responsible for the books and record of the company. Okay. And uh, if there's a wrongdoing done by the company, then obviously the director gets uh, in trouble. So although it's a limited company, okay. it in the end it is the di director who uh, who's liable. Who's liable? And also we have noticed recently uh, that uh, the p shadow director, where there's people uh, who are not business owners, mm. but they are directing uh, the director how to run the business. Okay. So it can p potentially go to the direct shadow director. All right. So okay. so we see in a community in our community where we have. Uh, the wives in the business name when the husband's actually running the business. Which is the shadow director. Which is the shadow director. Okay. So, uh, so that's what they are. Uh, you've got to be careful in what you do. Okay. And uh, we notice in our community uh, there's no uh, engagement between the director and the company. So mm -hmm. you should have a, you should actually have a letter or a contract between the company and the director. So if you work for your company, you should have a contract between. So. If anything company does, which you are not responsible for, then obviously it should not be legally challenged. So there should be a contract. But, but I, we've noticed that in our community, it doesn't happen. Okay. So I'm the director of the company, it's my company, I, it's mine. Yeah, I understand. But it shouldn't be like that. You're actually an employer. Of it. That's right, yeah. But there is a lot of tax benefits That's that, right, yeah. uh, that comes along with but it. But it's also yeah. limited liability. So you're not liable. Um, so if anything goes wrong with the company, you're not liable for your own personal assets. You're limited to the, the amount of the shareholding in the company. Mm, okay. Now, Mr. Tafail, I've got a one question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, company debt. Um, say if I had some company debt, which is tax, okay. and I can't afford it, what's the best way to deal with that? <laughs> okay. Um, th there's, uh, th the, moment, the, the easiest way, or the best way to deal with it would be uh, to liquidate the company. Obviously to liquidate the company. Yes, well, of course, you will talk to HMRC, you will explain to them you have no funds, but obviously if you do have funds, you personally have assets or properties or bank balances, but which are not the companies, obviously they have no access to that. But if the, if the company actually owes the debt, let's say corporation tax of £100,000, okay. or VAT of £100,000, there's £200,000 there for them to, uh, to take. So what, what you can say to them, look, will liquidate the company, but what we note, and the HMRC don't get anything out of that. Obviously, w you would pay the liquidators, you pay the accountants for liquidating it, but recently we are seeing what they are doing, they put, the, they put a notice on you, it's called personal notice. Okay. So although the debts are company debts, but they put a percentage of that debt on you. So you can liquidate the company, get rid of the £200,000, but what they can now do, is especially for VAT and PAYE, they can put a notice on you personally because you're the director who run the company. Really? Because VAT is the amount you collected from okay. the customers. PAYE is. is Does that defeat the object of being a limited company? Well, the obviously, once you open a limited company, the intentions are to run it properly, pay the tax, but obviously if you struggle to pay it or because of the so cash... they impose that on you because of your negligence. Of your negligence. And what they also okay. say, because okay. the, with the VAT and PAY and national insurance, is the tax you've collected from your employees and the VAT you collect from your customers. So can we have that, please? Or a percentage of it. Okay. That's so that's okay. what they're doing now. Uh, okay. So, yes. Okay. Well, they don't normally come for a percentage of uh, the corporation tax because obviously that's tax on company profits and if you're going uh, into liquidation, um, we're assuming that there isn't any uh, There's no tax, yes. Yeah. 
So mm -hmm. it's only uh, the VAT and also the income tax and also and national, national insurance, insurance yeah. which they transfer onto the director. Okay. A percentage of it. Yeah. Okay, okay. And can you give us um, any advice on tax planning? Um, if it's related to properties, let's say why to let properties, I'm sure the viewers will know uh, the changes that's happened uh, recently. Yeah, that's my next question for you. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, which is the changes on interest rates. So, um, as a sole trader or partnership, if you have buy to let properties, you cannot claim the interest or the expense, the interest cannot be claimed as an expense in the uh, account, which will be uh, staged uh, from 75% uh, this year, 50%, 25%, and by 2020 be zero. So for example, if you have a uh, one property with a rental income of, let's say, £10,000, and you, you're paying mortgage interest of £2,000, okay. then therefore your profit is £8,000. But uh, by 2020, that, that £2,000 you cannot claim anymore. So you pay tax on £10,000. On the full £10,000? Yes. But there is a way around it, possibly, which is to uh, transfer the properties into a limited company. Okay. And so if you have portfolios properties, and if they're under your name or uh, in a partnership, you can possibly tra uh, transfer into a, a limited company, if the bank allow it. And also you have to prove to HMRC you are trading. Mm -hmm. So an example would be, uh, if you have one or two properties where you're just getting a rental income mm -hmm. and uh, three, five, ten years time you will sell the properties, then HMRC see you as an investor. Okay. But if you, are, if you are buying and selling properties year, two years later, then you're seen as a trader. So if you're a trader, you can easily transfer the properties into a limited company and then minimise all the taxes. And you got, uh, could you not do that from right at the beginning? No, you can't. You can if the uh, if obviously if you can get a bank loan if that's possible. So we see people with. Uh, uh, oh, I understand. Yeah. We see people with a lot of properties where there's no mortgage on it, but the property is under husband and wife's name, mm. and because they have given the properties to a letting agency, they can't show that there's been a trader. So, so, to show the properties as a trader, you have to physically actually work on the properties. You collect your rent. You go to the tenants. If you show that that you actually physically work in, then okay. you as a trader. And if you, can, if you can show that, then you can transfer all your properties into a limited company, claim all the mortgage interest, and pay the tax at a lower rate. Okay. okay. And it's easier to transfer properties to uh, uh, your children and if you mm. plan to do that, if it's mm. for a company. That's good advice, that is, actually. Yeah. yeah. So there is a lot we need to ask the accountants. <laughs> yeah. As we need accountants, it is important. Um, especially if you're going to be serious about making money, then. You need to be serious about having the right professionals around you. Um, another th question I've got, um, we see a lot of people um, who's got loads of properties uh, and then there's inheritance tax. Yes. Um, could you guide us a little bit on that? Uh, with that, um, we, have a, we have a tax, tax partner in our, in our firm who's a charter tax advisor. So, uh, in, in terms of inheritance tax and tax planning work, we, he deals with that. Uh, you, you pass it on. We will pass it on to him. Okay. So we don't give wrong advice yeah, to him. That's really good because uh, what I see is a lot of um, accountants that they try and advise on everything themselves. No, you obviously yeah, can't be it's, master it's on everything. Exactly. Yeah. So no, that's good. Okay. And um, plus, there's also. Um, uh, like we've got estate planners that we work with as well, who yes. uh, sort out wills and trusts. We work with those sorts of people. Mm. So when we get these sort of questions of, of our clients, we bring in the, the professionals to work alongside us uh, and they offer the clients the best advice. Okay, that's mm. brilliant. Thank you very much. Now, coming back to the profession of accountancy, maybe we have some uh, viewers who are students or who are looking to look into the field of accountancy. Can we have a quick chat about that and if you can shed some light to our viewers on how to get into the field <laughs> of accounts uh, I mean, or setting uh, up the business of accounts there. I, um, I trained as an engineer actually. Okay. So I'm an engineer by training, oh. um, so I'm not an accountant. But uh, one day, uh, after five years of university, I decided that I want to be an accountant. So uh, again, uh, accountants is somebody who can, uh, as we say now in the profession, what I've seen from the uh, people, is someone who can think outside the box. If you're just thinking just numbers, 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 or analyze numbers, then it's not a profession for you. Okay. If you're somebody who can think outside the box, uh, what is that number for? Why is that, I mean, how does that affect this? How that affects that? If you're somebody who can think like that, then I think this is a profession to be in. If you're somebody who can't do that, then you will, you will struggle in the profession. Okay. 
and you have to be good with your numbers, obviously. Um, yes, but um, uh, it's mostly about um, thinking outside thinking the box. Outside the box. Yes, uh, yeah, no. actually. Um, Two sides uh, to it, really. Uh, yeah. There's uh, the compliance work, doing crunching all the numbers, uh, and that side of it. And then there's thinking outside the box and doing uh, the tax saving work, uh, sitting down with clients just by looking at them uh, and and their circumstances and talking to them so you've got different uh, share classes uh, so you've got uh, say you're setting up a company for someone mm -hmm. um, and then so you've got the husband and wife uh, one of the the biggest questions I get off people is what happens if I split up my wife does she walk off with half of my company if she's a, a class A shareholder the answer is yes but if you've got her as a class B shareholder the answer is no she doesn't have any voting rights but you've got the discretionary uh, to pay her uh, a dividend okay. each year, so you've got the tax, uh, tax saving benefits, but she can't walk off with half of your company. And the same as well for the children. Under certain circumstances, you can add children in as Class B shareholders. They don't have any voting rights, okay. so your children and your wife can't gang up on you and take the company off you. Okay, okay. thank yeah. you very much for this advice. Yeah. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you thank here you. Under the uh, in the studio. And, thank you, um, thank you very much. Provide some great valuable information. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Viewers, we have come to the end of the show, and I'd like to thank my guests once again. And obviously, as always, I want to thank you for watching. Um, well, viewers, I've learned a few things, and I'm sure you have, and I hope um, there's been some valuable information that you can use or um, would benefit you in your uh, business or business venture that you want to take on. Remember, you can email us with any further questions you may have, and I promise you they will be answered. Uh, viewers, as always, I want to give a bit of advice here and there, but here I want to leave three bits of advice with you. The greatest asset is faith, and the greatest liability is fear. Life is like accounting, and everything must be balanced. And finally, always surround yourself with assets and not liability. Well, that's all for me today, viewers. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'd like to thank the full team at NTV, and as always, a special thanks to Farsu Ahmed Chowdhury, our Business Today Show coordinator, for arranging some wonderful guests. Thank you. Don't forget to tune in every Sunday at 5 p.m. And um, obviously next week is going to be a repeat and we've got new shows coming the week after. If you have any questions about any business topics or about today's show, then please email us. Our email is businesstoday at europentv. That's businesstoday at europentv.com. And finally, and finally, do remember, until next time, tomorrow's business is business today.